don't even know how long. Um, today we are playing Floating Sandbox. Um, we're just gonna start with the default thing and just gonna see how it does with waves. It's gonna be boring, but if we do this, be less boring. As it seems to break upon impact. As this was not a very strong ship. Let's see what other ships there are. Let's just go to the top. This is some interesting ships. I'm going to try the Ark. See how it does with uh, some the uh, same same wave. Put the Titanic through. Um, uh, sit, sit flipper. Oh, some, some sound waves. Um, yeah, just a little bit of flooding. But something interesting is just start a little, little fire. A bit of a stronger fire since it would go underwater if you Extinguisher. What you can also do is I sit in half, or uh, a bit more than half. Um, let's actually get something interesting. Um, get the Hindenburg. Mm. Um, I think I'm gonna go down. Okay, so MS is where I think we're gonna be. <gasps> yeah, let's just, um, get the Costa Concordia out. I was right with MS. So we got the Costa Concordia, which flipped down its side. In uh, 2012, what I think could be interesting is if we pause, lift this up, and just um, kind of kind of beach it. Very, very carefully. And just melt it. Um, might skip through some of this. Yeah, the metal just, uh, just melts away. Actually, let's reset that. Much well. Cause that to just, uh, go out and sink. Let's restart. Let's see if we give this thing the, the dash the Titanic had. Which takes a lot of the of the structural integrity. It does two compart uh, three compartments, two bulkheads that have been destroyed to 
four, I think, with the show to contain it, but it's very easy flooding over. And, yeah. density real quick. There we go. That'll get it sinking faster. And something interesting. It's, um, what would normally sponge it. we will shift and make this amazing sound. Which well, rot the ship. We can just clean it right now, but in the settings, we go here and increase the rot a little bit. So uh, down here, we're, we're just a bit, yeah. do is just uh oh yeah perfect one and yeah there goes the one we can always just light it on fire then get rid of the antennas and the engines which this surprisingly had Let's get another ship. There's a Carnival Glory and the Carnival Legend. I don't know if they have the uh, T2. And that is a no. They have Airbuses and the AN-12. Russian aircraft. Uh, 177. Articulated bus from 1994 and a 747. We've got cardboard Titanic, which I would assume, with how cardboard works, would um not stay afloat very long. But you know what? Let's give it the. Good old. Oh, 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 wow. That's, um. Does this thing sink? Is this the actual unsinkable Titanic? It's just. But what we can also do is, um, make it pay for it being a cardboard Titanic. Bye. Raising the sea level. And... <laughs> Cargo ships. Ooh, 1973. Ooh, another carnival. I wonder if to smell that one. Load. That's true. I always love, um... Alright, let's see. What would, uh... Ah, uh -huh, yeah. That's a good place that a bomb would be. Do you know Sam's tip? Uh, yeah, that's Sam's song. And those are all S7s. Uh, S Bye-bye. Oh. See, this uh, shows you how how big the lucky blow. Oh. Right. Let's get you back down here.
slowly but surely. Oh, and he just falls right off. Okay. Bye bye. Alright. I always love when you just lose all of their cargo and go bankrupt immediately. I went like you 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 also end up dying because yeah, would you look at that? Oh, a lot of it survived. Okay. That's actually um uh, let this out see Ooh, there's a boot of a cruise ship in the sense that she has most of everything that is needed to accommodate passengers. Most like her, but some don't. All in all, she's an amazing ship. Anyways, the Carnival Dream is the leading ship in the dream class of cruise ship liners, where she sails the seas today as a beautiful, beloved beast. A BBB. I literally just made that up. Below her are her two sister ships, the Carnival Magic and the Carnival Breeze, that stand proud as their leader, the Carnival Dream, leads the two to glory. The Carnival Dream is the biggest of her company class, and while and while and her sisters were the largest ever built in Italy at the time of constructing her glory, you may have seen her in the movies Alvin and the Chipmunks Chipwreck, where they filmed her as the main ship of the movie, and the other movie World War Z, where she was announced by a sailor that she would be joining the fleet. This was shown upon entering a command center of a naval ship the main characters landed on. Her glory may live on as she is always remembered as an amazing ship that sailed the seas. No worry, she hasn't sunk in real life. Hopefully not yet. Okay, why is... Oh, it's a postcard on the RMS Olympic. The largest triple screw, screw, triple screw steamer in the world. Was an Olympic class. Yes, I don't know if it was the Olympic though. Now let's see how this thing it is very similar to the Carnival Glory, which I've destroyed many times. It doesn't have. Oh. Setup is a little different. Lifeboat wise, pool wise. Shape-wise, I suppose. It's uh, full power. Into death. Apparently, this thing has no compartments. Um, this was not a good design. Whoever designed it. For this game, um, yeah, let's open her up a little. Let's open her up a little. Let's uh, see what's inside of her. And just fire as she goes down. And it always plays. Um, shoot. Um, it should be. Uh, Uh, which one was it? Oh, yes. Near my god to thee. It always. Might as well play that whenever any ship sinks. Alright. Let's get something else out. So that was the Carnival Dream. Let's get the Olympic out. It's the HMT Olympic. Yeah, so. No, it did not. Look at the 1920. This is Pyramid of um, Britannic with folks. Thought they had a Britannic with power. Um, but I think Michael Bozarth um, is one of the designers of this game, so it should have, it does not have power. And it's uh, doing that, so let's put it out of its misery. The good old mine. That's how they did it in real life. 
Oh, hold on. You might need a little more. Well, there she goes. Let me, um, I know where it is. Um, it's up A, B, C, D, okay. There it is. HMHS Botanic with power. This one, so oh, tiny, that's interesting. So HM, HMHS Botanic with power. The Botanic was a beauty of a vessel, not to be confused with the Britannia. She was made by the company White Star Line itself. For, White Star Line itself, which was the fleet mate bo for both the RMS Olympic and RMS Titanic. She was built before the beginning of the First World War and was intended, intended to enter its service as a passenger liner, but was instead entered in as, as an Olympic class steamship. The HMHS Botanic was designed to be a hospital ship because of World War I and to be the safest of three ships on water due to the lesson of the RMS Titanic. She set on her maiden voyage and stayed up for more any more trips until one day the bow of the ship was punctured by a naval mine where she sank under 55 minutes near the Greek island of Kia. Ki Kia? Kia? Killing 30 people on board, saving 1,035, and injuring 38. So long, Britannic. Alright, so, yeah. So, like, that happened. Oh no, guys, what happened? I would also... We need to uh, raise the sea level a little bit to uh, make it accurate. Oh, 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 we we can't we can't have that. That's almost inaccurate. Oh, almost. Oh, how sad! Oh no! Wow. I thought you should, you should, uh, well, I thought you should stay up with four watertight compartments breached. Five, no, uh, uh, that looks like three out of four, but apparently bulkheads do not exist. Because if you look down here, we got the engine, the generator, altimeter, whatever, <laughs> that's, oh, yep, there goes electricity. Uh, let's see, do we still have, no. Alright, so, funnel control, lighting control, don't have the bell or the foghorn, so the foghorn would be here, the bell would be here. Um, but yeah, as, as we make contact with the ocean floor, we slowly come down from that side. Interesting. Um, funny thing here, um, so... This one does not have power. Okay, but this one, this is my Cole Bozo. It doesn't have power. But it's one of the designers for the ship. Um, what I don't like is how much it, uh, how much it weighs. So I'm just gonna beat it right now. I'm gonna swallow the Titanic. So, up here, a little Jack and Rose moment, which, um, with the anchors and the fact that there's be a giant anchor right here. Then I couldn't get right here. So, yeah. We got the cruise quarters, cargo, cargo, four peak, nothing there. Cargo. Oh, Jack and Rose moment again. Um, by eleven six. And what's interesting is it'll show you all the rooms instead of showing you the really interesting. Cause like from 
Boiler Room 5 from Boiler Room 6. So, um, did I just, okay, so, um, did I just, um, Yeah, we'll, we'll just simply repeat. It's from six and five. Goes up. Well, more. And out the funnel. You may realize that takes care of three funnels and if you don't know this then wow this was not connected to a boiler room but it still did have a tunnel running through the center which allowed cooling or air intakes for like, all of these for the reciprocating engine room and the turbine engine room and the aft cargo hold button, this fresh water tank down there, and the propeller shaft. That's the to the propeller, which we are now gonna want to. I guess um. Oh, uh, just gonna refresh the ship. How painful! It will now sink on us. Okay. Um. Don't you want to see? Then you will bulk. I see bulk there. Let's. Oh, oh wow. Alright, okay. Let's start up the. Armist Titanic Tiny. No. Armist Titanic at night. This is the same way as the interior one. I believe it's the same dude. You can see those are kind of just wobbling. I'm gonna forgive it the good old. Oh no, that's a one watertight. Two watertight compartments, three watertight compartments, four, that's as much we can go, and oh, looky there. That's the fifth watertight compartment breached, and well, we're going way under. This one, Michael put in the nice, yeah, and then you just rip off, oh, and also like, Oh no, not all my wireless antennas. Also, it did not break. Probably because that gouge is too big. These water, these watertight compartments were made to, I think. Let's give it a good old. Oh no. Do, 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 do. No, we'll even we'll even give you the fourth one. And give you yeah, 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 yeah. Alright. Interesting. Interesting noises from behind me. Alright, well this one, we can give it the good old... Oh, lordy lord. See, look how much smaller those compartments are. But this one won't automatically remove the funnels. Unfortunately. Now, um... Say goodbye to, uh, I need... 
communication you were gonna try and get out here. Oh, Lordy Lord. So we gotta make sure there's no connection left between the two pieces. Which I think the breaking took the funnel number three with. with. So, if you were gonna try and get number six to uh, get churning again to move us along, which would actually just put more water into our water tight compartments. Full speed ahead, my fellow Americans. That's. Yeah, alright, so. Yeah, so, um. One, we have no electricity, so. Um. Yeah, that. Force ripped that, uh. That pull in half. Interesting. Oh, look at that teat. That's almost surprisingly accurate with how it landed and compressed. These would have. One more. Um, yeah, this stays afloat for a while until. I'm sure they'll tip over enough that the second compartment will start flooding again. Oh, floodgates have opened, my friend. We can just follow the air bubbles down. This is a free game, by the way, on uh, Game Jolt. Um, I can see that in the. Split and the light. There's a light on the uh, front pole. I have um, Vogue tsunamis turned off. Speed up this process. Oh wow. Okay. Um. 